is called risotto milanese. And this is a family uh, recipe from that came from my northern Italian side on my father's side. And my grandmother used to make it occasionally on Sundays when we needed a break from our regular old um, rigatoni. You have to say risotto. I have a very hard time saying risotto. It's risotto or risotto milanese. And what that basically is, it's a rice dish. And traditionally use a boreal rice that's going to turn this dish into something really creamy. If you don't have a boreal rice, you can totally use a regular, uh, regular rice that you have in your fridge. You can use brown rice. The process of making this dish creamy does not come from cream at all. It comes in the process of how you cook the rice. You definitely need to be standing at the stove for at least 20 minutes because you add chicken broth slowly and as the rice absorbs it, it releases its grains and it develops that flavor and that texture. Uh, so this dish has one onion, two cups of boreal rice or whatever rice you have on hand. You have chicken stock, uh, you saute some mushrooms, grated cheese at the end, it starts with butter, and the finishing touch is saffron. Now saffron, by weight, is actually more expensive than gold, and what it's going to do is give it a nice aroma, and then it's also going to turn the dish into this beautiful yellow color. Of course, you need white wine to uh, deglaze the pan, and just to let you know, I bought a rotisserie chicken the other day, and I got four meals out of it. We ate some of the chicken when it came home from the store. I cut it up into pieces. I made a chicken salad and then I also made a chicken soup and I have some leftover broth. So if you don't have time to create your own broth, that's okay. You can buy um, something that's already made, but it always tastes better when you make it on your own. Next thing you want to do is warm your chicken broth. You're going to have a hot pan of chicken broth on the stove. Um, so that you can ladle it into your risotto as it's cooking. You're going to use three tablespoons of butter to start it off. This should be like a medium high heat. This one could be on low as it warms up. As the butter melts, uh, you're going to add your onion and you're going to fry that until it's translucent. And you're going to toast your rice at the bottom of the pan. So just pour that in and make sure that they're all, it's all covered and let that all get absorbed. The onions in this dish literally almost melt away after, through the cooking process. So you don't, even though those chunks seem a little bit big, when you're eating the dish, you don't even know that there's onion in it or that you started with it. So you let that toast for a couple minutes. Toasty, and now it's for our favorite part. We're gonna deglaze the pan with about a cup of, of white wine. From the dish, you're going to start adding your chicken broth, one ladle at a time. Well, maybe you can start the first one with two. It's important to have the chicken broth to be warmed on the back burner. So as you're working with this, it's the same temperature and it doesn't cool down through the process. You know it's time to add another ladle of broth is when you pull apart the Red Seas and there's no liquid coming through. That's when you add another ladle and you stir that all together and you let the rice absorb all that liquid. And once the liquid is absorbed, you add another ladle. This is why this dish is a little time consuming. You have to stand at the stove. You don't want the rice to burn at the bottom if all the liquid is absorbed. You have to stand here and you have to stir. You have to keep adding your chicken broth. Um, I have another jar of chicken broth in the fridge if I need another reserve. The recipe usually calls for about four cups, but I think it's more like six. So make sure you have a little extra on hand. If you don't have any extra on hand, if you have beef or chicken bouillon or a chicken base that you can add with water, that's okay too. All right, ready for label number two. Definitely have some good music going because you're gonna be here for a while. It does take about 20 minutes for all of this to absorb and for the rice to be tender. When you make your 
your own chicken broth. Um, you have to use the bones, you use carrots, you use celery, you use onions, you use bay leaves. Um, and then you strain, after it's finished cooking, you strain it and then you put it into the fridge. And what's going to happen is, is that after the refrigeration process, you're going to have the, all the fat that rises to the top. So you definitely want to skim most of that off. Ready for another label. It's been about 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, but the only way to really know if your rice is done or if your risotto is done is to take a bite and to taste the tenderness of the rice. This one's done. In the next step once your rice is done is to add your saffron. Now saffron, like I said before, is a coveted herb, okay? It literally comes from the pistil of a flower. And you just need about that much. Um, you can get this in a couple of different forms. Sometimes it comes in a powder. I actually bought the ones that are the whole pistils and these are just, it's beautiful. And wait till you see how yellow this turns this rice. I did turn the heat off. The store we shopped at when I was growing up, they actually kept the saffron with the cashier behind the counter because like I said, it was worth but in weight more than gold. So they didn't want anybody stealing it. You don't really need like a huge amount. So um, when we were making risotto, you always knew you had to ask for it behind the counter. After you take your risotto off the heat, you're going to add about a cup and a half or a cup of um, Pecorino Romano and just stir that in. And then you're going to put it into your serving uh, dish for family style. to prep it up a little. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Whatever. Just get it in the bowl. cheese on the top. Now these were my grandmother's bowls. These were the Sunday dinner uh, bowls that we had. Mostly rigatoni and brajol uh, with homemade meatballs um, on Sundays, but the rare occasion when we wanted to change it up, we had this amazing dish at my grandmother's table. So I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm.